For both noobs and veterans alike, we're going to be covering something today called Unreal Engine Insights. It is a optimization tool built into Unreal Engine 5, specifically starting, I believe, around 5.1. It actually became part of the built-in editor. Um, so I'm going to walk you through how to actually set up insights and how to use the different parts of it, um, as well as how to optimize your game. Now, we're going to be doing a deep dive here into insights. So we're going to be covering a lot of topics. So not all topics are going to get as much um, love and attention as they like. So I'm going to split out um, certain parts of this video. For example, memory insights. I'm going to make a separate video just on that part, um, mostly because that is a pretty in-depth system that can be kept separate from the rest of insights. But for now, let's go ahead and get started. Jumping into the engine, um, when you load up your project, you should see down here at the bottom right something called trace, and then you'll see two buttons here off to the right. Now, if you're wanting to actually trace um, your game, what you're doing here is you're telling the game, I want to collect a lot of stats about my game so that way I can optimize it. And so what you're going to want to do is actually click this little down arrow and you're going to see a lot of different options here. Now you can see where you actually store their profiling and trace directories. Um, you can see the Unreal Insights session browser. This is what we'll look at in a little bit. You can see any recent traces you've done. Um, as well as you have some options here you can set. What I'm going to recommend you do is there's a couple things here at the top with trace data. First, we're going to check mark stat named events. So basically any named events here are going to get shown up inside of our um, Unreal Insights. And then as well, inside of here, there's a lot of different options. Well, the big thing is you're going to want to kind of look at what you want to optimize. Now, if you're just doing your first couple passes, maybe you just kind of want to get a general idea of what's slow in your game. Um, maybe you just leave things kind of at the default. Um, but for example, if you know that maybe load time's an issue or file, you have specific file channels that you're, you're having trouble with, maybe like too big of files, but you're not sure which ones, it can be a little hard to kind of track down exactly what's being loaded on a specific level so that you can optimize for that. Um, and so what I'm going to go do here is I'm going to check mark stats, tasks, and I'm also going to do metadata, asset metadata, and then I think I'm going to leave everything else pretty much, oh, and then let's also do state tree, and we're going to leave pretty much everything else the same. Um, these are all pretty good options that they have on by default. Now you can do a couple things here. You can trace a screenshot, um, which basically takes a screenshot and then sends that to the actual trace itself. Um, this you wanna do while you're actively tracing. And then you have trace bookmark, um, so that way you can set different bookmarks for different events and things like that to happen. Um, and then you got your start trace, start save trace snapshot. Um, and then you can also just hit this. This starts tracing, this little button right here. And um, this takes a snapshot, so it saves the current trace buffer to the active destination. Now, something to be aware of before we start tracing here, the more options you select here, because it seems like it might be a good idea to select a lot of options, while you can do that, the more options you select here, the slower Unreal Trace is going to be. Um, so it may have negative performance um, in your actual game, as well as when you're actually loading the viewer of the stat trace. Um, so just be aware of that. You know, if you fill this with way too much, it can cause a problem, cause it to go very slow. Now let's actually select Niagara as well, because I've got some Niagara particle systems in here. All right, and I believe that is pretty much everything I want to do. So let's go ahead and start tracing. Now that we've got our trace started, I'm going to jump in game. And the moment you start tracing, it starts tracing even within the editor, um, which is really handy. So if you want to see things load in, you'll be able to see those. Now, normally, if you're doing like really in detail tracing, you're going to want to do this on a build version of your game and development build. Or you can also do it um, in the standalone launcher. Just for showing you, I'm going to do it in the PIE, but um, in editor, I mean, um, but if, for example, you want to do it as a more realistic, you know, way, you're going to want to do it something in standalone. So let's fire off some rounds. Let's launch our drone. Just do a couple little things here that will um, show up as different markers. Let's open up this and maybe launch some um, missiles off here because I know that those are going to have some pretty cool things going on. Oh, there goes the enemy PDC guns trying to fire ahead of the missiles. They're not very accurate right now because I'm doing some tweaks to try and um, change how they actually fire. All right. 
Let's let some explosion happens because I'll fire off some more systems. All right. And so that is pretty good for me. That's got a, a well-rounded um, amount of tracking done there. So let's escape. And then we'll go, go back down here and hit stop tracing. From here, we're going to hit Unreal Insights Session Browser. And what this is going to do is it's going to launch Insights. And it's going to, as you can see here, this is our tracer. Now, as you can see, because we were tracing a decent amount of stuff, um, that actually took up a whole gig um, for the amount of data that it's actually tracking. Now, of course, this will fluctuate depending on what you're tracking and what style you're tracking it, whether it's an editor and things. All of these really do play a bit of an effect on the file size. But let's go ahead and open it up. It also didn't help that I sat there and talked for a little bit while it was running. Um, so that eats up some time as well. All right. And that is pretty much everything. Now, if you take a look here, you can see that there are some spikes here. These are going to be some of your most important ones to track down and figure out what's causing these. Um, because these are going to be your actual problem points. These are going to be points in the game where the frame rate actually dropped pretty substantially. Now, while it's important to clean these up and make sure you get these taken care of, these are not the only thing you want to focus on because these are momentary blips. And you see how there's a couple of them here, especially at the beginning as things are kind of loading in, but then it kind of levels out and it's mostly clear, but then you get a couple more here at the end. That's not necessarily unexpected. Um, you know, if you can fix these up and make things happen, you know, maybe over a couple of frames instead of all at once, um, that definitely helps the player's experience, makes it feel less jittery. Um, but you also want to look at, you know, your average frame and kind of get an idea of what your frame rate looks like. Um, so you can see here down here, you know, I'm hitting 100, you know, uh, almost entirely above 100 a couple times. It dips down to 90 and the very high 80s. But then as you get closer to here, it climbs up and up and up until I'm hitting 30 frames a second. <clears throat> so the big question comes in, what's causing that? So let's click on a single frame here. And as you can see, well, you know, we've got a decent amount of stuff going on here. Well, what can we figure out from this? Just taking a look. Well, the top, we have 309 waiting for tasks. It looks like tick completion events. So some kind of physics events. Now we do know that our PDC was happening at this time. So our, our little um, guns there were shooting at the missiles. But as you can see, this doesn't really tell us a whole lot of information. So we're going to, have to do a little bit more digging than this. So what we're going to want to do is Basically, a few of these are going to have a lot of different information, just depending on what exactly you're looking at. So you see here, I then hit execute task because this looks like it's, you know, 27 milliseconds inclusive here. Let's go ahead and dive into this. So we're looking. OK, so it looks like there's sinking bodies, movement components. So some physics calls are happening. There is a collision box here. So what's what's this collision box doing? Looks like it's updating overlaps. So let's see, update component to world. So it looks like this is a lot of this is due to some ships are moving around. Um, some it looks like some physics objects are doing a lot of stuff. So you know, this is stuff that you can do different things to to try and. Uh, make them more performant. There's definitely a lot of different options out there when it comes to those kind of things. But let's also see if we can see any specific functions um, or anything doing anything. Because when it comes to actually, when you're looking at a lot of these, you know, you've got your physics things, but you see here, oh, here's game thread tickable time. Okay, we've got a timer manager. We've got a UI tick, blueprint time. So as you can see here, Right here, I found something that, while it doesn't sound like a lot at 2.2 milliseconds, all of this stuff adds up. And so when you tweak all of these, you can slowly kind of pare these down till you get them better and better. But as I can see here, I've got a UI tick element, blueprint time. It looks like I've got in my player head something that is ticking, um, that's taking up a decent amount of performance. I mean, it's nothing to sneeze at, 1.1 milliseconds. And so I look in here and it's like, okay, well, I'm sending updated info. I'm doing that 64 times in a single frame. That's an awful lot of times to be updating. I'm also getting all children 190, or 129 times. I got an array get that's firing 64 times, an array link that's firing 65 times. So how might I fix this? This is something that I need to investigate. Because, I mean, if I could get these to firing maybe twice a frame, once a frame, I mean, that's, you know, 
it seems like small amounts, but these are very easy things to fix just by giving them just a little bit of attention. You can actually quite easily, you know, um, reduce the amount of things you have calling in your UI. And you'd be surprised how much performance you can truly save overall when you make these small changes. As you can see here, for example, we've got these CWIS projectiles. Now these are pretty cool because these are projectiles being added to the blueprint projectile pool. And so these are actually something that is saving us performance. Um, this was actually a modification I made before um, I had them just creating and being destroyed. And this was massively eating up performance, but now they're just being pooled. So they're doing what's known as an object pool. So each one of those turrets has its own object pool. So when a projectile either collides with something or goes a certain distance away, it gets returned to that pool and reused rather than getting deleted. And that saves on performance because then there's less of that um, create and destroy going on. But as you can see, there's a lot of different things that you can look at just by digging through these different um, graphs here. You can see a lot of um, different things that affect your entire game's performance. Now, as you learn more about um, how different things work when you go through like these collision boxes and say, okay, well, I'm doing a lot of these. Is there any way I can make these more performant? You're going to notice and learn a lot about how your game works on the Mac end. For example, here, that UI tick we were talking about earlier, we can also see it here under this blueprint time. And we can see here specifically, we've got the player pawn that is also using one millisecond. So let's see, what is eating up our most time? It looks like here, at least according to this, our top thing is gonna be add actor local rotation. Well, okay, what are we doing there? Move components. So we got a few components here. You know, we're uploading all of these collisions. We're uploading these overlaps and we're, we're moving all these things around. It's like, okay, well, we're updating all of these. Well, why are we updating them all separately? You know, we could combine these into a single mesh and move them as a single mesh. Why don't we? Why aren't we? Um, and that's one of the ways you can save performance. And so that's something that you have to think about is digging into the nitty gritty here and really figuring out, you know, what is costing you the most time. And it does take some time to learn. It does take some... Um, effort to really dig through here and figure out what is what is eating away your performance but once you figure out how to get through here and how to dig through this um, you're going to find this going to save you a lot of time now let's also look at another interesting aspect of um, unreal insights and that is looking at multiple frames at a time because you know looking at a single frame is great for telling for seeing frame by frame performance um, but sometimes you kind of want to get an idea of like, you know, on average, you know, what's truly eating up my performance? What's really, you know, not helping here? So let's go ahead and we'll grab a section of this. And what this will do is this will combine those different um, elements into specifically um, grouping them by, you know, you got your max here. So there's your max inclusive time, you got your average inclusive time, your median, and then your minimum. So what you're wanting to kind of look here is, you know, probably your average is the most important thing because, you know, well, on average, how bad are specific tasks? So let's go here and look at maybe tick time, you know, and as we can see here, let's look at the inclusive time. You know, we got our front end tick, and we got objects actor doing tick see this doesn't really tell us a whole lot um, but then we look at our actual callees and what is being done then we start to get a more accurate picture of what's actually going on here so on average it looks like we have a couple of problems here our mesh and our collision box here so when we're looking at our um, simulation time okay it looks like perform overlap query time so this is eating up 443 milliseconds now this is over um about looks like about eight seconds um so don't don't necessarily look at the milliseconds as an exact thing because this is this is over a period of time but this is our most expensive thing so it looks like we have scene query total body instance overlap multi and then we have some geometry 
overlap and converting overlap. So, okay, that tells us here that we have some issues in terms of how our player character looks to be set up, just based on the fact that, you know, um, these different things here are actually, sir, let me correct myself. This is not the player character because this is actually the AI's setup. Um, uh, looking through here, you know, we got the reactor, the rear collision, mid four, mid aft, base top. Um, these are actually specifically colliders on my AI elements, which means that I probably set up something wrong in my collision, or if not, there's a more optimized way I could set this up. Um, if I dig through there, I can probably find one, or if I do some investigation. Now, it's not to say that, you know, they're never gonna be completely um, gone because there is going to be some performance um, trade-offs there. But I can definitely at least see I've got something going on here, you know, that's costing me at least some. Versus like see the lead indicator. This is a very simple collision box that is on my missile system, but it's set to no collision. It is set to never collide with anything. It just exists there for my uh, PDC turrets to aim at to actually shoot at the missiles. And so as such, as you can see here, it's very cheap. It's a very inexpensive thing. Um, but yeah, that is the basics of insights. Um, there is an awful lot to it. And as always, you know, if you have any questions, you can always leave them down below. Um, also the Unreal Engine Slackers Discord, um, you can go there. I am very often in um, one of those channels, either in enhanced input systems or in profiling. I'm constantly looking for questions to help people out. Um, or you can go to my own personal Discord in the description down below. But otherwise, good luck. Good hunting.